you know, there's a statement in the New Testament, Christ says something like, when you, when you do something to the least of people, you do it to me, him, right? And that's a very difficult statement to understand too, but it's something like, it, it's something reminiscent of the requirement to keep the idea of the transcendent reality of the person in mind at the same time you keep their proximal reality in mind. To have, to have your mind in two places at the same time when you're talking to people. Um, you know, I learned from a friend of mine in Montreal um, who is very socially sophisticated in, in some ways. Um, whenever, when, whenever he went into a store, I was like going shopping with him. And whenever he went into a store and he talked and, and he had an interaction with a clerk, the first thing he would do is have an interaction with the clerk, you know? He, he wouldn't have an interaction with the role of the clerk. He'd like look at the person, sort of take stock of the fact that they were there, and then ask them something genuine about their job or their store or how they were doing, like go into a conversation right away. And he didn't get personal about it because that can be intrusive, right? You have to be very sophisticated to do this. But he did indicate to the person that he was there, at least in part, for the good that could be done between them. It's something like that. And then the person would be ridiculously helpful. And so then, you know, if people mistreat you, you see this with antisocial kids. It's a very tragic thing to see because if you're an antisocial child, by the time you're about four, you're very hostile and distrustful to people. And so you're like a growling puppy. And if you're a growling puppy, you tend not to get petted. You're more likely to get kicked. And if you're a growling puppy and you get kicked, then you have even more reason to growl. And that's sort of the story of antisocial kids. If they're not well socialized by the time they're four and they're more on the aggressive side, then they alienate themselves from the community and all they get is rejection. Well, and then they look at the rejection and they think, well, to hell with humanity, you know? And no wonder they think that. But, but the part of the catastrophe is, is that they get what they evoke. And I'm not saying it's their fault precisely, but it doesn't matter. That's still what happens. And so you might ask yourself, if you're not getting from people what you need, there is some possibility that you're not approaching, especially if this happens to you repeatedly across people. And this is a virtual certainty. If it happens to you repeatedly across people, especially if you have the same bad experience with people, it's not them, it's you. I would say three is the limit. If something happens to you once, you write it off. If it happens to you twice, it's like, you open your eyes, but you write it off. But if it happens to you three times, it's probably you. Or it's the rest of the world. Better it's you, because you're not going to change the rest of the world.